So you've seen that the relief efforts have been broadly successful, but these people are still very poor. The nutritional outcomes are not good. Dr. Yunus has been pointing out that uh, there's a big concern that if these people were allowed to uh, enter the labor market in the local area, there could be a, a significant fall in the wages of the host population. And so while these efforts by the Bangladesh government, the international donors and NGOs have succeeded in averting a major humanitarian disaster, the status quo is not sustainable. There's continued financing by the government of Bangladesh and donor community is threatened by other competing needs and donor fatigue. And moreover, the long-run welfare of these people is being compromised by inadequate opportunities for children's education or skills training for adults. Now, the one po policy option that will improve the welfare of the Rohingya is to allow them to work outside the camps in which they live. So model simulations done for the project by Mateusz Filipski and Ernesto Tiburcio shows that if the employment of the Rohingya is restricted to the immediate area surrounding the camps, the wages could fall by as much as 25 percent. That point, that, and that's a big loss of income to poor households in the host community. However, if the Rohingya workers were able to integrate into a wider geographical area labor market, including the port city of Chittagong, that loss of income would be much smaller. And in fact, the, the real wages would perhaps decline by only 4 to 5 percent. And in addition, if the government and the donors provided income transfers to the host population for, and funds for investments in job creation, the model simulations indicate it would be possible to have these people join the labor force uh, without lowering wage rates at all. Uh, or reducing host population incomes. But such a prospect or policy option faces considerable opposition in Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, this should come as no surprise. Migration issues are controversial everywhere, in the United States, in Western Europe, in other parts of uh, Asia, and so one can uh, easily understand some of the uh, views of the Bangladesh community. Uh, and more broadly, there are some big international political economy considerations, uh, and a, a concern that if these people were allowed to stay or integrate into the local economy, it would encourage other people to come in as well. Uh, and so, again, this idea of allowing the, uh, these Myanmar nationals to join the labor force in Bangladesh uh, is highly uh, controversial. But I think it's important to note that workable solutions do exist. And for example, in Jordan, there have been a lot of Syrian refugees who have come into Jordan. And they've benefited from World Bank loans and trade concessions to Jordan that have eased access uh, to the European Union market for goods produced in factories by these migrants. And in that way, uh, these investments have benefited both the host community in Jordan and the migrants coming in from Syria. There are, looking forward, there are difficult policy choices to deal with these the forcibly displaced Myanmar nationals. And, and these choices are the choices of, of the Bangladesh people, their government, and to a large extent, the Rohingyas themselves. Uh, we can see that humanitarian efforts have opened up a window of opportunity to consider longer term solutions like the ones I've just described. But that window of opportunity won't stay open forever. 
and it's important that we look for solutions and that uh, something is done that we don't just forget about the Rohingya who have been there for almost two years now. Thank you.